Yayoi Kusama, mostly known for infinity rooms, has prone to hallucinations due to mental illness, vivid experiences of the world distorted, and enhanced colors and shapes from an early age. Born on March 22, 1929, Kusama's hometown was Matsumoto City in Nagano Prefecture of Japan and began creating art at the young age of 10, which was also when her hallucinations started. She had a tough childhood with physical abuse from her mother, and her father was a womanizer in which she would often be forced by her mother to spy on him with his woman. And because of this, she had a sexual obsession, yet she had a fear for sex as well. She was also discouraged by her mother telling her she could not be a painter when it was her dream. She states that, My art originates from hallucinations only I can see. I translate the hallucinations and obsessional images that plague me into sculptures and paintings. All my works and pastels are the products of my obsessional neurosis and are therefore inextricably connected to my disease. I create pieces even when I don't see hallucinations though. Her works is based in conceptual art and shows attributes to feminism, minimalism, surrealism, art brute, pop art, and abstract expressionism and is mixed with autobiographical, psychological, and sexual content. The curiosity and encouragement she got from Georgia O'Keeffe led her to travel to unknown places. So she took 60 kimonos and 2,000 of her drawings and paintings and planned to survive selling those, as well as the 1 million yen her mother provided her with the comet to never step in her house again. At first, Usama was interested in the country of France. She then learned that she would have to learn the language and pass the exam first to be able to just be considered to travel there. With the language being too difficult for her, she looked to another country, America. Kusama's first experience in the U.S. was Seattle. She knew nobody there besides a few people, but she was able to hold her first solo show there with 26 watercolors and pastels. While she was a huge success in Seattle, New York was her main goal of her journey. Many asked her to stay, but she wanted to climb to the top of the mountain, and that place was New York. Living in New York was a living hell for Kusama. It was struggle after struggle. Not only was the city violent, but the prices were not forgiving. While her rent was cheap, food was not after the cost of the Vietnam War. She had problems with her visa. Her studio windows were always broken. Getting enough food was a challenge. Her bed was an old door left on the street with only one blanket as comfort. And she spent most of her nights painting due to her restless nights of being cold and hungry. Living in America made her feel as if she had a special kind of freedom though. Being a Japanese in the free America made her feel like an outsider to America's social and cultural constrictions. This led her to feel uncommitted to these constrictions and led her to break social taboos and conventions in her art. Kusama arrived in New York City from Japan in 1958 and immediately approached dealers and artists alike to promote her work. Within the first few years, she began to exhibit and associate herself with seminal artists and critics, such as Donald Jude, Joseph Cornell, Viz Klein, and Lucio Fontana. In 1965, she mounted her first mural installation, Infinity Mirror Room, Phallus Field at Castelline Gallery in New York. A mirror room without a ceiling was filled with colorfully dotted phallus-like stuffed objects on the floor. The repeated reflections in the mirrors conveyed the illusion of a continuous sea of multiplied phalli expanding to its affinity. This playful and erotic exhibition immediately attracted the media's attention. She says that, Before and after creating a work, I fell ill, menaced by obsession that crawled through my body. She suffered hallucinations, asthma, erythema, tachycardia, and high and low blood pressure due to her severe anxieties. If it were not for art, I would have killed myself a long time ago, she says. Mm. She returned to Japan in 1973, and in 1977, Kusama checked herself into Seiwa Hospital for the Mentally Ill, where she eventually took up permanent residence. She has been living at the hospital ever since by choice. Her studio, where she continued to produce her work since the mid-1970s, is a short distance from the hospital in Shinjuku, Tokyo. Although she was largely forgotten after departing the New York art scene in the early 1970s, she is now acknowledged as one of the most important living artists to come out of Japan. One of her known art pieces, The Obliteration Room, 
This piece is very simple. It consists of plain white furniture in a white room. Visitors to the room are asked to place dots of varying sizes anywhere in the room. At the end, the piece is literally obliterated by the thousands of dots covering the room. It seems very chaotic and disorderly, yet somehow satisfying to look at. Perhaps Kusama was trying to challenge the status quo and also to delve into our rebellious nature. Usually, when we go into art galleries, we can only look but not touch anything. However, Kusama allows visitors to literally destroy the room with dots. This is probably why the piece is so satisfying to look at, seeing something so pristinely white turn into a mess of color. I think that this can also go into her mental state. She has a dot obsession, and us taking part of her obsession kind of takes us into her obsession, as if we're the ones seeing this. One of my favorite art pieces of Kusuma is The Souls of Million of Light Years Away. I was able to see this piece of art firsthand at the Broad. You walk into a square room with many lights suspended from the ceiling. The floor is a platform surrounded by still water, glassy and reflective just like the mirrors above it. When the door is shut, you become completely surrounded by millions of lights. Occasionally, the lights flicker and go out, creating a scary feeling since you go from infinite lights to what seems like infinite darkness. I see a lot of meanings that Kusuma could have probably tried to send. Even though this piece is called The Souls of Millions, I can't help but feel that there is a bit of narcissistic element to this piece. Everywhere you look, not only are there infinite lights, but infinite copies of the person in the room as well. This could tie in as the Infinity Room is also one of the most popular places to upload social media posts. Social media being the pinnacle of our narcissism. I'm sure there is a different intention for this piece, but I also feel like this could be a deeper secondary meaning as well. What I think is another message is that eventually we will all become souls. We will be part of these infinite souls that are shown in the room. No matter how much you try, in the end, we will be part of these ever-growing souls as we as a whole increase our existence to live on. To be alone in this room also gives a very personal feeling to it. Yayoi Kusuma is truly a great and unique artist. She's quite unusual with unusual art pieces, but that is what makes her so intriguing that we just get attracted to her and consumed by her work. She challenges the art that we see today often, not only showing her art, but taking us into her art, being a part of her art. She's truly remarkable.